Hello, this video is going to talk about assignment two for this class, Computer Science 340. The purpose of this assignment is to get you working with linked lists. And so what you're going to do is you're going to make a program that helps the user manage a playlist of songs with a linked list, a doubly linked list in particular. So what you're going to basically be doing is downloading the doubly linked list class that we worked on together that has some of the bare bones things a linked list would need, like adding to either end, removing from the linked list and so on. And you're going to write a program that uses that to create a linked list of song objects, combining up just two pieces of information, the title and the artist who does the song. Of course, you could add more things like genre and rating and play count and other things, but we're just gonna keep it simple and have those two things. So you'll need to first create a song class that stores those two pieces of information and then make a doubly linked list of those song objects. Now your program is going to let the user add to the playlist, remove from the playlist, and also do a couple of other things that you'll have to add code to the doubly linked list class to handle. One of them is to count how many songs are in the playlist, which we don't currently have. You also are going to have to write code to shuffle the playlist and to reverse the playlist. So you'll have to do a little bit of coding to make those things happen. A couple of things I'll say about those, they're one of like the, the harder parts of this project. One thing though, is that you should keep in mind that you can call upon the methods that you've already, that we already have. So in your reverse method, you can call the add method and the remove method. And I think it'll be easier to think about it in terms of removing and then adding rather than sort of like doing the whole thing from scratch. Um, the other thing about those methods is that they are supposed to like actually change the list in place. So if you call upon the thing to reverse the playlist, it shouldn't just print it out backwards. It should like physically change it around so that the song that was at the head is now at the tail and the song that was at the tail was at the head. So I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead and look at the assignment and I'll talk about just a few more things about this. Okay, so this assignment, like I said, is about using doubly linked lists to make a playlist manager type program. And it's due on October 2nd, which is over two weeks from now as the time that I'm posting this. Now you're going to have to, like I said, make this program so that you make a doubly linked list of song objects and then write sort of a menu driven program around that that deals with that playlist. And so here's the things that you're gonna have to do. Add a song to the playlist. We already you know, have, have a method for that, but you'll still have to have to make that work. Remove a song from the playlist. Print the number of songs from the playlist. So I would add a method to the double list class that we worked on together to count the number of nodes in the list. Play the playlist, which for our purposes, you're obviously not going to like play music in your program. That would be hard to do. We're just going to print the songs out from the first to the last. Shuffle the list. And like I said, this shuffling should be done actually inside the list. You shouldn't just print it in a random order. It should actually rearrange the nodes of the linked list somehow to make it be shuffled. And there's different ways you could do this. Like I said in the intro to this, I would recommend maybe thinking about how you can use the add and remove methods we already have in order to make that happen. And as you can do it sort of any way you like, as long as it is not easy to predict what the shuffle is going to do. It shouldn't just like swap the second one and the fourth one and the third one with the sixth one every single time. It should be sort of unpredictable, at least on the surface to see what's happening. Reverse does the similar thing, except it's going to obviously reverse the order. So the first song is now the last song. And again, it shouldn't just print it backwards. It should actually reverse it in place. Also, you will have to save the playlist to a text file and load a previously saved playlist from a file so that you can like save the playlist and then recall it back later to make more changes to it. And finally, you'll have to be able to quit the program. I have a sample run of this program here that you can look at and you don't have to use the same menu command structure that I have, but I thought it would be easy to do it this way. So here's, it shows the add method. It just asks you for the title and the artist, and then the play method prints them all out to the screen. Count will tell you how many songs there are, and then reverse by itself doesn't return any output. Like I said, it doesn't just print it out backwards, it actually physically changes it so that the next time when you play it, it will be in the reverse order. And same thing for shuffle. I hope those make sense. Then it, you, when you do the save command, it should ask you for a file to print it into. And 
my love of 90s rock made me come up with this example, but of course uh, it should work no matter what you type in for the artists and titles. Okay, so here's some details. You can, you can go over this in, in detail, but I, I think that I covered all those things as I said it. So just as a fun thing, if you want, uh, if you save the songs in the playlist in the same format that I came up with here, where you have the artist and then a hyphen, and then the title, you can actually import this format into things like Spotify and YouTube and Apple Music and other things. So if you if you save it to a .txt file with the same format, you can use this website, tunemymusic.com, to upload those playlist files that your playlist manager writes, and it can export it to, like I said, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, and YouTube and other things. So like usual, no global variables other than constants. All member data of a class should be private. Not the methods, of course. Methods sh can and should be public, but all of the like actual data, the instance variables should be private. And you should put comments in your code and have it be reasonably indented and well readable. And like usual now, if you would please submit the code for this assignment on Canvas when you're done. Like usual, if you have any questions on this at all, please just let me know. All right, thanks.